Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Today, to talk about the fact that uh, the new Guda Guda event finally got announced, so I figured now is the best time to actually start talking about it, now that we have the actual date. Which, it's gonna start September 14th, so probably 13th is when it's gonna hit the... <laughs> it usually goes, it's midnight the 13th, so it's technically the 14th, and then, yeah, so a couple days from now. So, let's get into the actual event, see how it's like, and that's gonna be today's video. I hope you like it, if you do, you can leave a like, comment down below about, tell, basically tell me however you feel about it, whatever. Um, and subscribe to me if you want some more video stuff. A lot of people have been subscribing lately and have been doing a lot of uh, support for the Fago video, so I thank you guys very much, and I appreciate it, and I will continue to do stuff as long as people keep supporting it. Well, even if they didn't support it, I'd still do it anyway. So, <laughs> even if nobody did, and even if nobody cared, I'd still go. All right, let's get into it. Guda Guda Yamatai Kukoku. It's the new event. This is maybe the only Guda Guda event I have no idea how to pronounce, so forgive me. Event title, oh, obviously, I'll just call it this. The Ultra Ancient Shinshingumi Biographies of the Guda Guda Yamatai Koko 2020. Well, for us, it's 2022. This is kind of the introduction for it. So here's the actual goals of the event. You have to try and restore the Yamatai country. You gotta clear free requests to obtain reconstruction materials. Use those materials to complete reconstruction quests that will lead to new quests. If certain facilities are reconstructed, there will be a harvesting quest that will reward the players with QP and can be repeated after a set amount of time. Second part of the event will be a special raid where all players involved, similar to the older raids, but with a twist. And this is kind of how the schedule went in Japan, so I can assume that on the 14th when this goes out, so it will be obviously until the end date here. And then the next day we will get uh, uh, X3 and 4, and then the next day after that, 5 and 6, and then 7 and the epilogue um, two days later, and this is probably to give you some leeway so you can actually catch up in time to do the raids. Uh, which would, I assume, start right after the epilogue base of this uh, second part of the event. Yeah, so it has to be after. Mmm. Which, good, it gives you some time. If you don't, if you've never experienced a Fago raid, this is what the raid is. Basically, a raid boss will show up. In this case, there looks to be a raid boss for every single class. So there's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. Seven, and then once the max raid health... I've, you know, once there's this many kills for each class, they go away. And then each raid usually has a material drop as well as event material to go with it. So we have Saber, Archer, you can see here, has just a buttload. It's also pretty good for farming QP from what I can remember. If you're able to farm them, that is. Some insane amounts of drops, and also material drops as well. Uh, so because they're insane material drops, these things don't last long. <laughs> they, in Japan for sure, they're notorious for living like three hours and then they go away. I think on NA you have a little bit of a better time. I think usually raids are up for maybe a, a half a day maybe. Maybe you get to get to 12 hours. If the material that they're offering is bad or not the greatest, usually they last a little bit longer. But that's just my experience with them. For the most part, raids don't last very long, so make sure you're playing through the event to keep up with it. Just something to keep in mind. In terms of the actual structure, yeah, you just collect materials and then you can reconstruct your stuff. And I assume you just go in there once you have the right material. And then it looks like you can level up the harvesting stuff, and depending on your harvest level, this is what you can get. So if you at level 1, you get 1 million every 8 hours, but then at the last level, it's 3 million. Uh, this final one looks pretty nice, actually. <laughs> I would try and get this one max as soon as possible. I usually don't play the JP events because um, I don't play JP. I usually keep up with them to see what's, what new units and stuff like that, but I don't actually play them until they're actually here at NA. So I'm kind of interested to see how it goes in there and play it for the first time. I used to, in the past, super prepare for everything, but now I'm kind of just like, I just want to play the event and have my fun with it and kind of go through it. But it's good to kind of just know the basic layout of stuff. All right, next, let's go into the actual... Uh, oh yeah, event bonuses. This is obvious. Yep. Here's the event CE, Himiko's Leisure. Critical damage up 10%. Buster crit, card crit damage up 15%. Start a battle. Start battle with 30%. What? NP? At, I assume that's NP, right? Yes, NP charge. But then at the level final level, it's 50%. Alright. And then event award command codes. Majin Sun, this is the 5 star event code. Engraved card star absorption up 100%. Engraved card critical damage up 10%. T 
Demon King Gun, the 4 star, increase the engraved card crit damage by 25% only on the burning field. And Chibi Nobu, engraved card crit damage up by 5%, gain crit stars when attacking with the engraved card. Uh, nothing really pops out. This one sounds pretty alright. This one is obviously very geared toward any Nobu that could summon the burning field. <laughs> or has already, I guess any unit that has bonuses on the burning field or can summon the burning field. It's so niche, but whatever, it's fine. And Chibi Double is, you know, Chibi Double. Very nice. Oh, it also looks like drop bonuses are going to depend on the servant as well. At least the, the bonus ones are, it looks like, from what I can see here, which is pretty nice. The summoning campaign. All right. So here's the actual gacha. It has Himiko and Saito in it. I'll go over Saito first, and then I'll go over Himiko. Saito, he is a Saber. He has one quick card, two arts cards, two busters. First skill, freely drawn sword, increase own arts performance for three turns. Increased own buster performance for three turns, gain crit stars at level 10s, 20%, 20%, and 20 stars. Not bad. Eye of the Mind, True B, grant self evasion for one turn, increase own defense for three turns, 18% defense up, six turns, okay. Indivisible Sword A, increase on attack for 3 attacks, 3 turns, increase on crit damage for 3 attacks, 3 turns, 30% and 100%. Uh, don't know about this one, but I don't personally like it when it's specifically just attacks, unless that buff is just crazy insane. 30% doesn't sound, the crit damage does sound kind of pretty nice to me, honestly, but the actual attack, I think, hmm, hmm. I guess they had to do it that way just because he doesn't have three of a specific card, so fair enough. His passive skills are Magic Resistance D, Independent Action C, Increase on Debuff Resistance by 12.5%, Increase on Crit Damage by 6%, and the Append skill, the final one, which is the one that's usually important, is Anti-Assassin, because it's the only one that's different from the others. <clears throat> Noble Phantasm is an Arts, 7 hit. Deals more damage to one enemy, reduces their crit uh, critical attack chance by 20% for 3 turns, and reduces their arts resistance for 3 turns as well. Hmm, alright, he sounds pretty good actually. I um, mean, goddammit, nobody wants to see the other wiki pages, thank you. And the damage is <laughs> at level 1 is 900% and then at level 5 is 1500%. I don't remember if I mentioned that at all, but anyway. In terms of a single target, single target four star uh, arts unit, I think he actually seems pretty decent to me. The one thing that's kind of bad about being a single target unit for arts is that if you're not very good at looping, then you kind of don't get as crazy damage compared to Buster and even Quick. And the reason is is that Busters have a lot of things that kind of like supplement them doing crazy amounts of huge damage. Like their steroids are crazy in terms of that. Um, quick can, can supply themselves with their own stars, so they're constantly critting if they are also using their quick stuff and looping around and doing all that other stuff. And there's crit stars plenty. In arts, you really, really have to depend on that arts unit. That uh, uh, yeah, that arts unit dealing a lot of damage and doing it as quickly as possible because you very rarely will get crit uh, crit, st uh, crit stars or stars in general unless there's a unit. The unit itself says, hey, give you some stars. And the fact that he gives 20 stars is pretty nice. They might probably accidentally end up going to Castoria, but hey, nothing you can do in that instance. I don't think he has any way to increase it for himself. No, he doesn't. But with that said, I still think that's pretty nice. Having seven hits is really nice for a Noble Phantasm. That should make it so he should be able to loop pretty easily for, as a single target uh, arts. And so yeah, pretty nice. In terms of guy units, there is not a lot of dude units usually released in Fago, to the sadness of many of the female player base and some of the uh, male player base as well who like cool dudes and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with it. So you gotta take your cool dudes where you can. And this looks like a cool dude to me. He is a part of the Shinsengumi, so Shin Shinsengumi? There you go, that's a better way of saying it anyway. So yeah, that's Saito. Good luck. Shoutouts to all the I know there's people hype for Saito. I see you guys leave comments. I wish you guys the best of luck. Get your boy. Alright, next. Himiko. This is the unit I'm going to be summoning for here, right here. Himiko. So, she is a ruler. She has one quick card, two arts cards, two busters. 
for skills, uh, the Shaman says Charisma B increases party attack for three turns, grants parties eight crit star regeneration buff for three turns, 20% attack. Second skill, Kido A increases zone buster performance for three turns, increases zone damage against demonic enemies for three turns, grants self invincibility for one turn. The buster up is 30% and the versus demonic damage is up 50%. Okay. And the third skill is the Oracle's Brilliance charges her own NP gauge, increases own crit star absorption of buster cards for one turn, increases own crit star damage of buster cards for one turn. The NP up is for 50%, the buster absorption is a 500%, and the buster crit damage is 100%. And her passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Territory Creation A, and Natural Body A. An increase to own debuff resistance by 20%, an increase to arts performance by 10%, good thing she has two of them, and grants self poison debuff immunity and curse debuff immunity, which is nice. Her pen skills, her third skill is a anti foreigner. And her noble phantasm is the eternal mirror that models the celestial bodies. It is a barrier type noble phantasm, increases the party's buster performance for three turns, and overcharges the party's NP by two stages for one time. Three turns. The buster up is 30% at level one. If you somehow get her MP5, it is a 50%. Good luck with that. Increases party crit damage for three turns. 100%. Uh, at 100% start, the crit damage is 50%. At the final full charge, it is 100%. Now, funny enough, if with her specific overcharges parties, I think that applies to her for two stages for one time. That means the next time that she would do this, she would give crit damage up by 75%. So there you go. This unit is the one I've been waiting for. I really like her. Um, she is obviously a buster supporter, <laughs> in a weird sense, I'll say. Is she the old, the, she's not on probably the same tier as obviously the actual buster supports, which are, uh, including JP, uh, Vich, Merlin, um, the other person I can't say the name of because it might be a spoiler for some, but there is another one, I'm not forgetting. Uh, she's kind of more of a, like a small kind of one, I guess, kind of compared it to someone like Shakespeare. Someone who buffs Buster that you wouldn't expect. Actually, I think she's on the tier of, not in the tier, she's above a tier of that. But Nightingale has, for example, a 50% Buster increase, and so does um, Quetz. But you don't really necessarily consider them a Buster support. She is actually a Buster support. She's one tier above them, so she's actually able to help out the team a decent amount. The one problem with it in at least the NA side, they fix this on the JP side of the game, so don't get me twisted on this. On the JP side of the game, Buster is amazing. On the NA side of the, uh, the game, things are a little bit weird because Castoria is obviously the go-to unit, and Merlin has to support Buster units, and he has to do it with only 20% NP uh, charge on one skill, and that is not enough. <laughs> in no ways is it enough. Um... So she kind of gives a support. She is a supporting unit. She's also funny enough. She can, if things come to the worst, she can throw hands herself, which is pretty nice, I would say. Funny enough, a lot of the rulers who are Buster are just that, are just literally girls who fight and punch stuff. And I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. But yeah, I'm going to be going for her because I have literally like... I don't have Merlin, so I don't have very many Buster supports. I have some specific team ideas that I would gladly use her on that I think would be fun and have fun doing, especially in single single player type of single player. This game is single player. Single target <laughs> type of fights where it's like specifically boss battles or challenges. And especially with this specific um, natural body, I would like to have that just in case there's ever a challenge quest that requires me to be have a poison or no curse that's always kind of a nice thing to kind of have there at the beginning but yeah that's i think she's a good unit in general um probably not game breaking crazy broken that's obviously coming at the end of the year when um <laughs> when new year's hits which is where most people are probably saving their um their quartz if they're looking for something specific in that nature but i'm not really i just really like himiko I like her design, I kind of like what she's got going here, so I will gladly summon for her. That's enough justification for me. If that's not enough just justification for you, then I would say you could probably skip, or maybe give like a, if you're really just curious, give a couple summons, get some grind CEs going, and if you get her, then you can go like, hey, yay, a new unit to kind of mess around with, but in terms of a unit that will be meta-defining from here on out, mm, she's not that. 
it's just very unfortunate she's not that. I would love that, considering that I'm summoning for her and I like her. But, you know, not every unit is that. And I'm perfectly fine with the way she's built as is right now. Ah, so that's the summon. In terms of the actual CEs, we got the Fireflies Flame Integrity, Quick 10%, Arts 10%, NP Overcharge State plus 2%. Per oh, I forgot to also mention just because this ability right here to give Overcharge is really good. <laughs> One of the Morgan, LeFay, who's coming later, is really good because she gives overcharge. Morgan is a much better version of a unit that gives this because her NP actually does damage. Her her not giving damage and just giving buster performance is kind of like whatever for me, but um, this ability is really good. There's, you can do a lot of silly stuff with this specific ability with overcharging. But anyway, let's move on. The limited craft essences are Fireflies, Flame of Integrity, Quick, 10%, Arts, 10%, NP, Overcharge, State, plus 2, one time. Fine day. Gain 10 crit stars when Equipped Servant enters the battlefield. NP damage up 15%. And the Golden Prairie, Quick, 3%, HP recover rate, 5%. Is this specific to limited craft essences? They sure are. Uh, funny enough, I think these both of these have better versions of the CEs already out. Because the reason is, is that they give NP gauge with them. Like, MP overcharge state is good, but if you don't have specific MP gauge to go with it, you need more than just plus two, I would say. Which you probably get when you get max and limit broken, right? Let me see, just to be sure. No, you just kind of get, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Ah, oh, no, I accidentally exit out of that. It's fine. I'll get back to it. But yeah, I don't think the, C, the CEs are specifically good for the event itself. I've seen better for sure. So you don't have to, they're really just here to help you grind out. So if you don't get them, don't feel the worst about it. Unless you're someone who greatly likes to collect them and stuff. All right, there we go. Back on it. On the friend point gotcha, this is very important. I covered this a little bit in the welfare, so you should know. Uh, Nobukatsu is coming to the game. He's really just here to kind of support one specific unit and it's, her name is Nobu. Any form of Nobu he supports and then he dies and then he leaves the battlefield. Um, he is limited, so you should try getting him from the friend point while you can. You may as well, and save a copy in case you need him. He'll be useful in the event itself, because as you can see here, he gets event bonuses of 50%. 100% um, attack, 50% bond, but then he also gives all three of these, so that's ex insanely good. I don't care about anything else. This reason alone is good enough for me to say, oh yeah, no, get him. Actually, funny enough, with this kind of bonus, if you have these servants, you really don't need... Um... I guess unless you're someone who really just wants to constantly to return stuff, so never mind. Anyway, and then we also have these limited craft essences that are in the friend point gotcha, which this the three star always is. The craft essence the exp card and the other craft essence the exp card, so that's nice. And yeah, that's this event. I think it's a pretty simple event. It's going to be a lead in to another big grinding one. And funny enough, it seems like it would probably be pretty simple outside of. Uh, the raids, obviously, because raids are a different kind of beast of what to raid for and stuff. <sighs> but yeah, I'll look forward to it. Look forward to it on the 14th. I will guess I'll wait a week. <laughs> I just noticed that that's a week away. But yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. I probably need to grind out the story and get the last of my cords to see if I can... I think I'm only going to go maybe four multis deep. Maybe that's good enough. I don't know. I usually like to do three three to five. I, I do more if I can convince my brother to convince me to do more. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of other stuff coming up later on in the year, so be careful what you choose to summon for. I'm summoning for it because I really like Himiko, so if you're someone who's similar in that vein and really likes her, the what she's got going for her, maybe go and summon, but other than that, you're good to skip and just kind of enjoy the event as it is. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you watched it all the way through. God damn, there's a lot of stuff to go through. <sighs> I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Bye-bye.